uh, we're on the exhaust now and uh, I did chunk quite a bit of material out of here as you can see I set my trenches but I didn't go all the way to the curve uh, I want some reversion because it's got a cast iron manifold but what I was looking for is a little bit of a ski jump, a little bit of lift so that it ain't coming out and that turn hasn't got to be so dramatic where it's a L shape at least if I can get a little bit of a ski jump like look over here at this one see how I did that I brought that down and if you take your finger and follow it it's got about a 15 maybe 20 degree angle that's pretty much what I was trying to do is just get a little bit of a lift right there as it's kicking out so I can create more of a high pressure area at the top and low pressure at the bottom is going to give me a better what's called mainstream flow angle the the flow in the center which is actually the flow that you got so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and bring this up to the top, and then at that point, I'll be time to switch to my egg and do final blending through the whole head, kind of tie everything to, together, as I always say, connect dot to dot, because that's about it. Uh, we're almost done. Uh, it's still quite a few hours, actually. Uh, for the price I charge for this, it's a very good bargain. Right now, I've got a little over 13 hours in the porting and setup. By the time I do the valve job and everything, I'll have right at about, I guess, 18 hours in it, maybe 19. And for the price I charge, which is uh, on this deal here, a stage 3 MPG mode with valve job and, and everything I charge between five and six hundred dollars depending on if it's a four cylinder four valves two valves whatever this particular job right here was five hundred dollars uh, I have no parts money in it but how much is that worth when you look at the amount of gas mileage not to mention increased torque and power he'll have across the RPM range way better than putting it. Now I'm going for the blending part. All raw material is removed on the exhaust. But remember I moved this side over right here. Well now I got to take a small egg and blend the trenches and pull it in and then shift to the pointed one. So I'm going to form the final shape, get a good blend, do, do both of them and, uh, and, and do the exhaust, and then I can use the finger and come in and finesse it, finish it up. Then that point right there, I'll do the valve job. But basically, I'm just leveling because the big cutters leave big marks with their blades that forms little baby trenches, and this right here is going to smooth it and get it blended out really good. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this part right here, and then we'll go to the finger and um, hopefully we can get a really nice shape out of it. It's starting to look really good. The part y'all are going to be interested in is the bowls where this divider blade comes out. That's what's going to be really cool. All right. Okay. While we're on the exhaust side, I'm going to show you the bowl. Remember how I cut that guide out? Well, there's a reason I did so I could get back in here and shape it. But here's something I want to show you. This is the way that the head come from the factory. Okay, you see the shiny part? That's the 45 degree seat. Now take a look at this to see what kind of shit job that they do. Look at my numbers. A hundred and twenty-six thousandths wide seat. I might could tighten it up a little bit. Let me see. I've got it to a hundred and ten thousandths. That is double the width that that seat needs to be. The face of the valve on the exhaust, this, this just shows you. Here's the old exhaust valve, one that was toast. Look at that. It, the face and the head is wider than the dab blame face on the valve. And that's just garbage. The valve job is crap Ola. Not to mention that the valve would barely stick in the guide. It was real tight. Wait a minute. See, I can barely fit it. And I have chamfered them, by the way. See, look at that. So all these guides have to be hand honed to fit the valves that's going to go in it. Look at that. Okay, next thing, the valve job's going to have to be redone because they got them seats wider than a four-lane highway in Los Angeles. 
So this is all bad. The guides are bad. The valve job's bad. So I'm going to have to go in there, redo the three angle after the guides are hand honed to make this thing what it's supposed to be, or else carbon will build up within three or four thousand miles. This thing's going to have a problem sealing because it's going to be so wide that carbon will lay in between the face of the valve and the seat on the head. So I wanted to show you that and let you know that when you buy these uh, mass-produced cylinder heads or replacement heads, all you're getting is a casting. The guides have to be done. The valve job has to be done. All this stuff has got to be redone because if you don't, the thing ain't going to last. It's just poor quality of workmanship. I believe these probably come from China as well. But take a look at the bowls. Now, I'm going to try to zoom in so you can see what I'm about to do. And what I'm going to do is where that guide was there, you see that big empty void in the cut? Now I can reach in here. And I'm not removing a lot of material, I'm just shaking it. Okay, and right there. You cannot believe that little bit of work, now that the guide's gone and I can get behind there and shape that bowl, how many cubic feet per minute of air that this thing's going to pass now that I was able to get that out of the way on the exhaust. Alright, I just wanted to go over that big giant wide seat, show you why I'm having to redo the guides and the valve job on the customer's head on a brand new casting. I think that pretty much justifies what I'm getting ready to have to do. Then after that, remember, I got to go back in with a metal bit and cut the excess overhang of the seat and pull it into the uh, to the 60 degree angle that it, the new angle it's going to have for it'll have a good radius to kick the air out and do what it's supposed to. What I'm doing now, all the all the grinding is done with the grinder. Uh, let's get a little close up. I'm going in here with my stone and I'm stoning it to blend it in. This way, it saves me a tremendous amount of time on the panel. takes any big debits from the rough carbide mark.
that's what I do. I'll there'll be stoned, and then I'll go back in there. I'm not going to go too crazy on the polish. Maybe a, a 60 grit just to get it smooth. But that's my step. I stone them and then polish them. Then once all that's done, then I do the valve job. That's the last thing I'm going to do on this deal, and then the final blend cut. Now I didn't think about this, but guess what I got over here, ladies and gentlemen. I've got the stock head that came off of the car right here. So we're going to be able to do some really good visual comparisons. I know it'll be a little dirty, but we'll be able to go in there with the snap gauges and do some comparisons before and after, you know, and just measure and, and see what we got. I could actually probably go in there and do a uh, CC of the intake port before and after the exhaust port if I could wire brush it and get it clean enough and get it to hold a seat and that would really give us a real good heads up about stock and then MPG mode and the difference between the two okay now we'll go on to the get that done and the blending on the exhaust and begin <coughs> what I'm doing now is I'm taking a dingleberry brush which has got stones Shooting a little bit in the guides, they were attached to the top side. Now make a few passes. Now this don't remove much material. It'll take any edges out or anything like that and make it a smooth clearance. It didn't need much taken out of it, but uh, still, I like to go on in there and hit it with this. It puts a nice little type of cross hatch on it. It gives it a real good finish on the inside. It makes good for compatibility with the oil. And it's just how I've done them for years and I've had pretty good results out of it. Unfortunately, the brushes don't last real long, so that's one of the downsides of it. But now we're getting ready to do the valve job on the head and turn it into a real three-angle cut. So this won't be a hard valve job in respect that uh, the carbide surdy type cutter machine has went and took all the material out for me. But... There's enough left in there to really face this valve like in a performance version at the end of the seat. So let's go ahead and get that going. <laughs> 